Good morning and welcome. We'll be getting started at the top of the hour at 10 a.m. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, welcome. Always happy to see everyone joining us. We'll be getting started in a few minutes here. Feel free to make yourselves comfortable. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm gonna get us started here, just about at 10 a.m. My name is Joe, and I'm a digital book specialist here at Overdrive. I'm joined by my teammate, Marissa, and we're going to take you through getting started with Libby, the library reading app. Now, before we dive into the Libby app, I have a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover. We are recording our session this morning, and you will receive that recording in an email tomorrow morning from Zoom. You can uh, you know, review that as many times as you like or share it with family and friends, anyone who you think would benefit from meeting Libby. But the reason I point this out is because we recommend you watch us as we go through the demonstration this morning, uh, because there's a little time after we get through it for you to start to dive into the Libby app. So for now, just watch us, uh, see what we're doing, it out and ask us questions after we get through this getting started session. Additionally, you can ask Marissa and I anytime by using the Q&A button in your Zoom meeting controls. This is the only way you'll be able to reach us. We do have chat and the raise hand features disabled. We like to make sure that all of our questions are going into one central location so that way everyone can see those questions and benefit from the answers we provide. We will respond to questions as they come up in the Q&A feature so you'll get text replies. If one of us is talking or presenting, the other will be responding. You can ask questions anonymously if that makes you more comfortable. Um, and these questions, anything that's asked will be viewable in that recording as well. Let's see, okay, let me head on over here. And with all of that out of the way, I'd like to flip over to my device here. Marissa and I are both using iPads today, and the Libby app is a free app available for Apple, Android, and in a browser by going to libbyapp.com. Now, whether you are using Apple, Android, or libbyapp.com, Libby will look exactly the same across all devices. The only difference you're going to see is where we download our app from, which, there we go. Now that I'm connected, you'll see my screen. And once we dive in, it will all look the same. All right, now that I'm all connected, uh, for my Apple users, we'll be heading to the blue App Store icon. If you're on an Android device, you'll be using the Google Play Store. It's a multicolored play button or multicolored triangle. And then one final note that Marissa just chatted out now, um, when we share our device screens, sometimes people see that portions cut off at the top or bottom, and she's just sent out some instructions on how to change that screen size so you can see any and all menus that we're in. All right, so I'm back in my app store here. I want to find the tab that says search because we're going to be looking for the Libby app. So I will type in L-I-B-B-Y, and then I'm just going to tap right on search because Libby's the first or second result that pops up. So the second here because an ad popped up, but we are looking for Libby by Overdrive. It's this maroon app icon with Libby reading her book. 
Now you'll notice on my screen, I have the text nice and big so everyone can see it, but also you'll see that it says open. Um, on your device, it will say get or install. Mine says open because Libby's already downloaded for me. So tap get or install to install the free Libby app and give it a minute to download. And then we'll leave our app store and head over and find that brand new app on our screen. We're looking for that same icon we just saw in the app store. And when we open up Libby for the very first time, she has some instructions to help us find our library and get signed in with our card. We'll only need to do this with our initial setup and then going forward, Libby will remember this library and card info so we can always dive right back into searching for titles or reading our book. So Libby's first question here is, do you have a library card? And I'll say yes. And now we have to find our library location. So I'm actually going to tap on, I'll search for a library. This is my recommended way to find your library. We can search by the name, the city we live in, or our zip code. And I am going to go with zip today. Nope, that is backwards, there we go. We are visiting the Defiance Public Library, part of the Ohio Digital Library. And Marissa, I forgot we're home today. <laughs> <laughs> we're based out of Cleveland, so usually we're virtually all over the place. It's nice to be uh, back home. <laughs> so now that I've selected the Ohio Digital Library option for our Defiance Library card, we're not quite done yet. So while we're partially in our collection here, we still need to sign in with our library card. So if you already have a library card from the Defiance Public Library system, we're going to tap on this. If you're joining us from another Ohio Digital Library location, you would tap on choose another location and find your library in that drop down list. Or if you don't have a library card yet, you can actually use your cell phone number to receive an instant digital card right in Libby. Now I already have a library card for Defiance Public Library, so I'm going to tap on that name right there. And then we just have to enter our library card and pin. Let me bring that closer so I can see it. So this is the number that appears on your card. No dashes, no spaces, just all those numbers. All right, that's in. So I'm going to tap on next. And then we have to enter our PIN. The default at your library is the last four digits of your phone number. But if for some reason that doesn't work, um, just reach out to your library, they'll be able to adjust that for you. So I've got that info entered. So I'm going to tap on sign in. As long as I type those numbers in correctly, there we go, the page refreshes. And now we have access to the Ohio Digital Library complete collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. So from here, I get to hand things off to Marissa. She is going to take us through searching for titles, borrowing and placing holds, adjusting the appearance settings in an ebook, and then showing us the ways that we can be notified when a hold we've placed has become available. So these are all the basics you need to know to become a Libby super user. Marissa is gonna take you through that. She is using a demo library from OverDrive on her iPad today. So you'll see a different logo on her screen, but the functionality is exactly the same. So now that you're all connected, I'll hand things off to you. And thank you everyone for joining us. All right, thank you, Joe. All right, so I just wanna point out one more time. This is typically where people find that their screen is cut off. If you cannot see the five icons down at the very bottom of this screen, that means you're going to need to follow those instructions. Joe just chatted them out again, and that way you can see the full screen. Because as you'll see throughout the presentation, the navigation bar down at the bottom is pretty important. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with teaching you all of the very basic steps that you'll need to know to get started with Libby. So we're not going to cover anything too nitty gritty here in this first session. It's all going to be everything that you absolutely need to know and none of the frills. So we're going to start down at the very bottom of the screen here with that navigation bar. 
I will talk about each of these icons throughout the entire presentation, but we're going to start the presentation to the left of this Libby icon. So right in the center, you see Libby's head there. We're going to start to the left of that. To the left of the Libby icon is where you're going to do all of your browsing the digital collection and searching for books that you want to borrow. So we're going to start on the library card. This is where you can browse your library's entire digital collection. So think of it like you grab your library card and then head to the library to find a book. You're browsing those shelves. So I'm already tapped into that library card here. Up at the very top of the screen, you'll first see some filters. So you could tap on any of these filters here to look for a book that's new or popular or random. You could even tap on subjects here to choose a specific subject that you want to browse books by. So if you wanted to look at a mystery title, you could go there as well. As we scroll down this page, you'll start to see some catalog guides. This is just another way that uh, the library will curate their collection so that it's specific for some people, so kids and teens. At your library, you'll even see a magazine guide, which will allow you to hop into search for a magazine. Very nice and easy. We talk about that in our deep dive session today. And then as we make our way farther down the list, that's when you'll start to see uh, curated collections that your library puts together for you. So these are gonna be changing all the time. You can think of it like if you walked into the physical library during the summer and they were displaying beach reads, but in the winter they're displaying cozy mysteries. This is just the digital version of that. So these lists will change all the time. Now, I do want to point out how you can visually tell the difference between an ebook and an audiobook by looking at that jacket cover. So I'm going to use these two books in this first column here to explain that. This bottom book, uh, The Pillars of the Earth, you can see it's kind of a half jacket cover and then right underneath it, it has a little pair of headphones and then the length of time of the audiobook. So this one's a monster. You have to really be dedicated to dive into a 41 hour audiobook. Um, very, very nice there. That is how you can tell um, what an audiobook is going to be by looking at its jacket cover. Right above that, the Underground Railroad, you can see that is a full jacket cover. There aren't any headphones down underneath it. So if you see a full jacket cover like that, that's going to indicate that it is a ebook. So just keep that in mind when you're searching for titles. That way you're borrowing the format that you most prefer. All right. So like I said, the library card is where you're going to browse your library's digital collection. You'll see those curated collections. You'll see those filters um, so that you can look through what's new. If you go right to the left of that library card, you see the magnifying glass icon. This is what you're gonna tap if you wanna look for a specific title. So if you know the title or author or even series name that you are looking for, you can type that in here. You can always hit one of these search results. I always like to just tap on search so it captures everything in that list. So you can see everything matching untamed. And as I scroll down, you can see there is the audiobook as well as the ebook. So when you are looking for books, you'll notice that some titles will say borrow next to their jacket cover, while other titles will say place hold. And I'm really sorry if you can hear my cat asking me if he can leave the room. He can't. <laughs> He has to wait for dad to come and get him. All right. So if it says place hold, that means that you have to join a wait list. There are enough people um, or there's people reading all of the copies that your library owns. So just tap on place hold and then confirm that you want to place hold by tapping this maroon button here. Just below that, you will see approximately how long that title will take to get to you. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on placeholder here. 
And now Libby is giving us a few different uh, things we can do next. So I'm going to go ahead and say keep browsing. That's going to take us right back to that same search that we were making. So I'm going to tap on that. And now you can see Untamed, the audiobook version, is on my hold shelf. Now I'm going to <laughs> text my partner to tell him to come and get the cat <laughs> because he's not giving up. So go, give me one second here. There we go. All right. So then if you want to borrow a book, all you have to do is tap on borrow next to that jacket cover. Or if you don't know what the book is about yet, just tap directly on that jacket cover there to view its title details. So this will give you all of that back jacket cover information there, and you'll have the option to borrow from this screen as well. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on borrow here. You can see up at the top, we're borrowing this title for 21 days. 21 days is the default lending period at your library, so you're not going to have to change this or anything like that, and it will um, automatically return on its due date, so you don't have to worry about late fees in Libby, all those titles return automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on borrow. And now we can see this title is downloading for offline use. So as soon as you get a check mark in the little circle there when it's downloading for offline use, that means you no longer have to be on Wi Fi or use cellular data. You could take your tablet or phone up into a plane, out to the beach. It doesn't really matter. You will still be able to access and read your book. So I'm going to go ahead and tap open book now. And that's going to give us the option to send the book to a Kindle device or read it in Libby. So Joe mentioned that the Libby app is available on iOS and Android devices. We do not have a Libby app for Kindle devices yet. That's something we're always working on. But for now, if you have a Kindle and you would like to read your title there, what you do is tap on this button here that says Kindle. It will prompt you to sign into your Amazon account. That's why I don't show it here since we're recording. I'm not giving the whole world my password. And after you sign into your Amazon account, there will be a big gold button. You just can't miss it. It says get library book, and that will deliver your title to the Kindle device that's attached to your Amazon account. Libby walks you right through it. It is really simple and easy. Right now, we are going to be talking about a few of the key reading features inside the Libby app. So I'm going to tap on Libby here. That's going to open up that book. Up at the very top and bottom of the screen, you'll always see a menus. They're kind of blocking that book there. So to make them drop out of the way, all you have to do is tap on the center of the screen. That will make those disappear. When you want them to come back, tap on the center screen of the screen again, and that will make them reappear. Down at the very bottom is where you're going to see your reading progress. So I'm on page one of 379. Now let's go ahead and dive right into this book here. Again, I'm just tapping on the center of the screen to make those menus disappear and then tapping or swiping on the right side of the screen to page forward. You can do it on the left side of the screen if you want to go backward. Now. I do want to show you how you can customize your reading settings and reading appearance to meet your needs. So I'm going to tap on the center of the screen again. That's going to make those menus reappear. And then we are going to change the reading appearance. Up in the top right hand corner here, you can see that A icon. That A stands for appearance there. So I'm going to tap on that. And within your appearance, there are a few different things that you can change. So the first thing is going to be your text scale. You can use this text slider here to increase or decrease the font size. Next, we have our lighting. So I'm currently in bright mode, but if you want to read at night and don't want that bright screen in your partner's face, or you just like something a little easier on the eyes, you also have that dark mode option as well. 
And then last but not least, we have book design. These are different fonts that you can put Libby into. I always like to point out this open dyslexic font. It might make it easier for some users with dyslexia to read. So all nice options here for uh, customizing that ebook experience to make it work for you instead of you working for it. So I'm going to actually change these all back to my default here for my next presentation. And the reason I do that is because Libby will keep and apply these settings moving forward after you set them. So you only have to make these changes to your appearance once, and then every time you borrow a book thereafter, Libby's going to automatically deliver those titles to you with those appearance settings in place, and you're not going to have to keep on changing it over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on hide here. That's going to drop this menu right out of the way. And then I'm going to leave this ebook and we're going to hop into an audiobook. So I'm going to tap on back up in the top left hand corner. Just remember, if you are currently reading a book and you don't see those menus, all you have to do is tap on the center of the screen. That will make those menus reappear. And then that's when you can tap on back. So now we are on the shelf. And this is my first time I reorient you down there in the navigation bar. So let's head down to the navigation bar. First, you're going to see I now have a now reading bar that appears on the screen. So what this is, is the last book that you have open is going to populate down there for easy access. So you can hop into that book whenever you want. So I could go back to browsing the library and I can still tap on this bar here to hop directly back in that book without having to return to my shelf. Now I'm going to dismiss this here just so you can see that full navigation bar for the presentation. So at the very beginning of the presentation, we started to the left of this Libby icon here. Remember, we grabbed our library card and went and browsed the library's digital collection. And then we also tapped on that magnifying glass to search for a specific title, author, or series. Now we're actually over on the right side of that Libby menu. So you can see this little stack of books here. This is what we're currently on. It's our shelf. And that's going to be where all of your loans and holds will live. So here you can see that I have the title that I just borrowed with you earlier today. If I scroll down, I have a magazine. Again, that's what we talk about in our deep dive session today. And then an audiobook. You see those headphones and the length of time. Let's go ahead and hop into this audiobook that I borrowed a few days ago. So in an audiobook up at the very top of the screen, you'll see your reading progress. So I'm about 12% of the way through here. On the left, it's the length of time that you've spent listening. And on the right, how much time you have left. Down in the bottom of the player is where you'll find that play button. All you have to do to start the narrator is tap on play and it's coming out of my computer today. Usually it doesn't. So I paused it really quick. It usually comes out of my headphones um, and I want you to hear me. So our pause button acts as our stop button. You saw me tap it there really quickly and that is um, acts as our stop button. So we didn't want to clutter up this screen with a bunch of different buttons. When you're done listening to an audiobook for the time being, tap on pause and then that's when you can close the app or tap on back up in that left hand corner just a warning libby is designed to play in the background that audiobook in the background so if you don't pause the audiobook and you just minimize the app and hop into another app you'll still be listening to that audiobook if you don't pause the audiobook and then tap back and start browsing for another book you'll still be listening to that audiobook so when you're done listening, just tap on pause. That'll stop that narrator from talking. And then that is when you can leave the book. So I'm going to come back down to the very bottom of the screen again. You'll see I now have a new reading now bar because like I said, it opens uh, or it populates 
with the last title that you had open so you can easily jump back in. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that again. So right next to our bookshelf here, you see the uh, clock icon. I'm just gonna tap into this really briefly. It's just your activity timeline. So it's a brief overview of your loans, holds, renews, and returns. Now, we're gonna finish off the presentation right there in the center of the navigation bar. This is the Libby icon, and you can think of uh, the Libby menu here as your app settings. So right now, Libby is actually telling me, you can see a little red bubble on her head with the number one inside. I have one notification waiting for me uh, to see what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the Libby menu. That's gonna open that Libby menu um, from the right side of the screen. And the notification that she was alerting me about is that I had a hold lapse. I did not borrow it in time. So Libby is gonna prompt you to set up your notifications the very first time you place a hold. Since I already have my notifications set, it didn't prompt me to do that. I'm gonna just dismiss this uh, current notification out of the way by swiping it to the left. And you can see a new box took its place and I can manage my notifications from here. For you, it'll be much simpler because you'll be prompted as soon as you uh, place a hold. I'm just hopping in here to explain what it is you're gonna be prompted with and why um, certain things are more important the, than others. So Libby alerts you about all of the important events that happen within the app. There are three ways to be notified. So you can ignore if you don't think it's something that you need to know. You can set a menu badge, which is an in-app notification. And you actually just saw me walk through exactly what that looked like. The first indication of that menu badge was on Libby's head down here in the navigation bar. We had that bubble with the number one inside. And then as soon as I opened that Libby menu up, up at the top of the screen, it had that box letting me know that my hold had lapsed. So that is a type of notification that you'll only see inside the Libby app. You have to have the Libby app open to view it. If you go up one more option here to the blue notification line, that's going to be a push notification. And it will show up on your device's screen regardless of what app you have open. So you could be reading the news or browsing Facebook and you're still going to be able to see that notification appear on your screen kind of like a text message would. So you do not have to be inside the Libby app open to see it. So this is a good option for you if you're not gonna be opening Libby every single day. Now, right underneath all of those uh, ways you can be notified, you have all of the things that you can be notified about. Now, the most important is hold ready. And the reason it's important to be notified when your hold is ready is because when it's your turn on the wait list, you will have a three day period, more specifically 72 hour period to take one of three actions. You can either borrow the book, cancel the hold if you're no longer interested in it, or you can have the book delivered later. This is a good option if you find that you get busy. What deliver later means is you can choose a time period where you stay at the top of a wait list and then people will skip over you in line until that time period ends and you'll be the next person in line for the book. Now, if you don't borrow it, cancel it, or have it delivered later in that three-day period, then Libby is going to automatically deliver the title later one time as a courtesy, and you'll be, uh, you'll, uh, be the next person on the waiting list again after that time period ends. If it becomes available to you again and you have that three day period again and you don't take action, then that's when Libby's going to cancel your hold. Because in those three day periods, that book is in limbo. You're the only person who can take action on it. So after two, three day periods, Libby cancels that hold and you'll have to go and find the book again. So get alerted so that you can snatch that book up or stay at the top of the wait list with that deliver later feature. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on back up in this top, uh, top of the Libby app here. 
We just have two more things to talk about. So the next thing is our libraries. You can see I have two library cards attached in Libby. It's really nice to add multiple library cards to the Libby app because it gives you more uh, variety in selection. So some libraries might own books that other libraries don't. Maybe holds and wait lists are shorter. And in Ohio, it's really nice. Most Ohio libraries allow you to get a library card from that library. Joe and I, we live in Cleveland, as we mentioned. In our area, there are six different libraries that we can have access and get libraries cards to. So reach out to whatever library you are interested in. They'll all have different uh, criteria you need to meet. But once you do that, you can come down to add a library and add those additional library cards. Last but not least, we have help and support. So if you come down to get some help, this will allow you to find common solutions to frequently asked questions. Or up at the very top here, you can type in a keyword or um, a question. Let's go for a keyword. So remember I told you, I'm not gonna teach you anything that you don't absolutely need to know to get started with Libby and titles return automatically. So you don't absolutely need to know that. However, you can return titles early before their due date if you'd like. So I just went ahead and typed in return and then Libby's guessing what I'm asking and I am asking returning books. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And here you can see Libby's giving me the directions for how to go ahead and return a title manually. Now, if you can't find the answers that you're looking for there, don't panic. You can always come down to ask our support team. If you tap on this, you'll be connected via email with OverDrive Technical Support Specialists. They are Libby experts, so there are very few questions that you can throw their way that they won't know. And then they can also help you troubleshoot any deeper issues. So if you ever have trouble downloading something or anything along those lines, they can help you work through that. All right. So in 30 minutes, we just taught you all of those basic steps that you need to know to get started with the Libby app. I'm going to let Joe take back over on the screen here, and we are going to move on to next steps. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. And thank you all for joining us for our getting started portion of today's webinar. We're just wrapping that up now. Now we're about to transition into some time where you can ask us anything. So send your questions through using that Q&A feature. Once again, you can ask questions anonymously. And while we are doing those, uh, while we're taking those questions and that's coming through, we're going to move on here to testing your knowledge. We're gonna do some quick little quizzes uh, pretty much everything we just covered. So we have about 15 minutes where we will be asking you these questions and answering any questions you ask us before transitioning over into our deep dive that will happen at 1045. Now you are welcome to stick around for that deep dive, but we recommend that if you are feeling confident you take it, if you are kind of at your limit of Libby info, uh, you can drop off before we dive into that session at 1045. Um, it will be in that recording that comes tomorrow via email. So just a heads up, it is a lot of, we know it's a lot of info to take in in one stretch. Uh, so we just like to provide that that little warning, it's not anything you can't handle, but if you are at your max, watch it tomorrow when you get that email from Zoom. So with that said, I am going to switch over to our next slide here and start asking everyone some questions. We'll be using the Zoom poll feature. It's going to pop up in the center of your screen. Uh, if you are using multiple displays, it may not pop up in the center, it may pop up on another screen. And if you're on a mobile device, like a, cell, like a smartphone or a uh, tablet, it may not pop up at all. You have to navigate to where it says polls in your Zoom meeting control to open that up. So housekeeping again, that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so I'm going to launch question number one. And our first question here is, in the navigation bar, what do you tap to browse your library's collection? And I do want to mention um, polls are anonymous. We won't see who answered uh, what. This is really just to encourage um, you to engage with us, to see if you remembered what we covered. 
But so right now we are talking about when you browse your library's collection, what do you tap on to go and find new titles? You're just browsing away. So we've got most of our voters in right now. I'm going to close this in three, two, and one. Let me share these results. Awesome, we are almost 100% correct here. When you are looking for uh, titles, when you're just browsing for a new title to read, you want to go to that library card tab. So you can see on the video that's playing, when we tap on that library card, we can browse through all of the different curated collections. It's a lot like walking around the library and just kind of finding things libraries recommend. If you know a specific title you're looking for, just want to point out one more time, you can tap on the magnifying glass and type out the title or the author, and that'll give you that very direct result. Um, it, I just wanted to mention, since one of the responses we received was stack of books, that is your shelf. So that's where your borrowed books go, which I may have uh, just given away question number two here. Uh, but in the navigation bar, what do you tap to find your loans and holds? So back down in that bar, which icon are we using? Is it the magnifying glass, the library card, the Libby menu icon, the stack of books, or the clock? I think you're sharing. You're not, you're, that poll isn't launched. You're just sharing the. Yeah. <laughs> we did some testing this morning. Things didn't go. <laughs> They're not in their usual spot. I'm like, wow, got answers so fast the first time. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. All right. And I'm going to close this one in three two, one. Awesome. So you are all correct. And uh, when you want to look for your loans and holds, you navigate to that stack of books icon, and this will take you to your shelf. So your shelf at the base level shows you everything on one page, but you can use the button that says loans or the button that says holds to navigate directly to those types of items only. Great job, everyone. You are doing wonderful. We love being able to kind of quiz you, ask these questions, and just kind of see where you're at. No, I hit the wrong button there. There we go. Question number three is up. What are the three ways you can customize the appearance of your ebook? So select the three correct answers. You can change the text scale or the size of the font. You can change the lighting or the background color of the title. You can change the book design, which is the font of the book. Or you can change the language, which is the language the book is written in. So there are three correct answers. Pick all three. Right, looks good. We've got everyone voted, so I'm going to end that poll. And now I'm going to share the results. So we have um, text scale, lighting, book design, and language all selected. So let me stop sharing those results and start this video. The three ways you can customize your ebook's appearance. Uh, first, you'll tap in the center of your screen and tap on the appearance menu. And the things you can change to customize this setting are the text scale or the size of the font, make it as large or as small as you need. You can change the lighting, which is that background color. Bright mode is great for daytime, dark is great and easy on your eyes at night. And then last, you can change the book design. Uh, so this is the font that the title is presented in. And I know we like to highlight our open dyslexic font, but there are a lot of options, including a custom option, where not only can you change the font and the font size, but the spacing between the lines. Now, while your library does offer titles in other languages, that's not something you can change within the title. Uh, if you picked a book in English, or if you picked a book French, uh, you are stuck with that language if that is the format you picked. Uh, just like if you pick an ebook, you can't make it an audiobook. You kind of have to split between the two. Um, but but that is a, a fair guess. 
All right, question number four. This one's, this one's easy, not a lot of reading on my end. So let me launch this. True or false, titles return automatically on their due date. This one's a little sneaky on our end. Marissa covers it right at the end when she's showing how to ask um, our support team or find solutions within Libby. And everyone has voted and you are all 100% correct. Titles return automatically on their due date so you never have to worry about fines or late fees with Libby. If you do want to return a title early, we'll show that off on the screen here. You go to your shell, tap on manage loan, and then tap return early. So since you have a three week lending period as a default from your library, if you finish a book in you know, two weeks instead of that full three, always nice to return it early and pass it on to the next person waiting for it. All right, and our final question here, this one is about your holds when they are ready. So let me launch that. When a hold becomes available, you can borrow the title, have the title delivered later, or cancel your hold. Those are your three options. How long do you have to make one of these choices? One day, two days, three days, or one week? All right, and I'm going to end that now. You guys are killing it today. This is awesome to see. So you're all completely correct. You have three days to make a choice when a hold becomes available. And of course, those options are to borrow that title then, have the title delivered later when it's more convenient for you, or cancel your hold. Now, uh, you can see on the screen here, it's pretty clear when a hold becomes ready to either borrow or deliver it later. But if you do want to cancel that hold, you tap on manage hold and then tap cancel hold. That will cancel the hold and send it off to the next person on the list. So great job, everyone. Uh, we love to see that engagement. We love to see your kind of feedback and those questions. I am going to flip over to a thank you slide here because this is kind of the point where I share final messages if you are hopping off, if you're not sticking around. Um, but thank you so much for joining us for the getting started and that kind of quiz section of our webinar today. We are about to switch over to our deep dive into Libby where Marissa and I talk about our favorite tips and tricks in the Libby app. As mentioned, if you uh, are kind of at your max capacity today, you will receive a recording of the full session tomorrow morning in an email from Zoom. That way you can go over anything you want to review again, or if you're not sticking around for that last session, you can watch that in its entirety tomorrow. Uh, but of course, we encourage you to stay if you are ready to learn more. Since people may be jumping on at 1045 for that uh, final part of our webinar today, we are gonna leave the next five minutes open. So if you need to step away from your computer, get some more coffee, um, anything like that, you're welcome to do so. Or keep sending questions into Marissa and I. This is a wonderful free period to take five minutes, ask us anything, um, start exploring the Libby app and going through the different getting started steps that we uh, covered in that first session and ask us any questions as they pop up for you. Otherwise, we will both be here on mute. And if you have questions, send those through and we'll get your response. Thanks for joining us today. And just, we both unmuted at the same time. <laughs> I was gonna say once again, as a reminder, you can ask us questions anytime by using that Q&A button on your Zoom screen, type out your question, and we will either reply in text in Q&A or over audio since we've got a few minutes here to answer questions. Yeah, just since no uh, questions were coming in, I wanted to just um, 
answer a question that we commonly get about returning titles. So a lot of people will ask, I know my title's returned in 21 days, but when on the 21st day is it due? And so Libby is very specific in, like I said, that three-day window when you have a hold, it's really specifically 72 hours. Libby to the minute marks that 21 days. So if you borrow it at 1145 and then uh, wait 21 days, it'll be 1145 on that 21st day that that title will return. So don't panic if you borrowed it late in the evening that day and in the morning you're like, oh no, my book's returned and you, you, you have all the way until that late evening to uh, finish it. So I always just like to point that out as well. Great point. Libby, Libby is specific like that, but it is a, a huge plus that you get if you borrowed it at the end of the day that day, you're getting that whole day to read it still. All right, well, we are hitting that 1045 mark now. So I'm going to get us rolling again. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are just joining us, my name is Joe and I'm a digital book specialist here at Overdrive. And I'm joined by my teammate, Marissa. And we are about to take you through our Libby tips and tricks session, where we take a deep dive into our favorite features of the Libby app. Before we do that though, I do have a couple housekeeping items. We are recording our session today, and you will receive a copy of this in an email tomorrow morning from Zoom. That way you will be able to download it and keep it permanently or review anything that we covered either earlier or in this session, as well as share it with family and friends. We recommend that you uh, watch us as we go through the presentation and then uh, try it out on your own and ask us questions after we go through the five tips and tricks that we will be covering in this session. Additionally, you can ask Marissa and I questions at any point throughout the entire webinar by going to the Q&A button in your Zoom meeting controls. Uh, this is the only way to reach out to us. We have chat and uh, raise hand disabled, so that way all of the questions are going into one location because that is viewable in the recording. So we like to make sure everyone can see the questions that are being asked and the answers that are provided. You can ask questions anonymously makes you more comfortable. I also like to point out that this session is a little different than our earlier session in two key ways. Uh, previously, if you were asking questions, I would answer those uh, via chat or not via chat, via text in that Q&A box, where in this session, I tend to save more of those for the open 15 minutes that we have at the end, uh, where we're answering and showing off questions live in demo on our screen here, as opposed to just in a text response. So keep in mind that's one difference if you were in our getting started session. The second difference here is that we have a list of five tips and tricks that we want to show off. And while there is a flow to it, it's not the same fluidity from our getting started session. We will be going from tip one and then kind of working our way down that list. So just keep in mind that change in format. So with all of that said, I would like to show off what we're talking about today. First, we will be covering how to find and read magazines. Then we'll go through customizing your browsing experience. 
Then we'll talk about how to filter and refine searches to find the titles you like faster. Then we'll work on tagging titles, and then we'll wrap it up with making notes and highlights. So Marissa is going to take a moment here to connect her device and share her screen. She is using that demo library from OverDrive that I mentioned if you were in our earlier session. We just like to use a demo library so we don't borrow anything you might be waiting for. Regardless of what collection you're in, the app functions exactly the same, so no worries on that. And it looks like Marissa's all connected, so we will hand it off to you. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. All right, thank you, Joe. So um, because your collection has magazines, we fit an extra tip into this session here. So I'm just gonna dive right in so that we can get it all covered in our 30 minutes. So I'm going to start with tip number one, which is finding and reading magazines. So down at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see those five icons. And remember from our very first getting started session on the library uh, card tab here, this is where you are going to browse your library's digital collection. So if you wanted to browse for a magazine, there are a couple ways you can do that. The first and easiest way for you is always going to be by tapping on the magazine catalog guide. If you are on the library page here, just scroll down slightly, you'll see a bar here. Uh, your bar is gonna be maroon and red. I know that because I use Ohio Digital Library. This is my demo library here, but personally I use the Ohio Digital Library. So I know firsthand, it's a great collection. So under these catalog guides, you will have a magazine catalog guide. You can just tap into that and it will show you all of the magazines that your library owns. Now you can see my library, uh, demo library doesn't have a magazine catalog guide. So I'm just gonna scroll right up here. The second way that you can browse for magazines is using these filters up at the top. So you can see there is an available filter. And what's special about magazines is that they are available all the time. You never have to wait on a wait list. Everyone can read them at the same exact time. So they're always going to be available. So if you want to find magazines nice and easy and you don't want to use that catalog guide, just tap on available. That will bring up all of the available titles in your entire library's digital collection. But then you can tap on magazines up here at the top to filter out those ebooks and audiobooks. So you can see now I'm just looking at the magazines in my library's digital collection. So those are the two ways that you can easily browse for magazines. Now, just like I showed in the getting started session, if you have a specific magazine in mind that you're looking for, you can go ahead and tap on that magnifying glass. Let's just clear my search here and I'm going to type in the New Yorker. And just go ahead and tap on search. And that is how you can find a specific magazine. Now, when you see a grouping like this, it's always gonna show you the last five issues that are in your library's digital collection. But if they own more, then what you can do is tap on latest issue. This is gonna show you the title details page for that specific issue of the magazine. But if you scroll down, all the way past all of the title details, that's when you'll see series information. So in addition to those five titles that it showed us in that first screen, if you scroll down, you'll be able to continue looking for back issues. So you just have to tap on that down arrow there and keep on going back. This will continue to drop down until you've reached the end of what your library owns. So it will go all the way to the last, the latest back issue that they have, and then it will stop there. So what is a really nice tip to point out here is anytime you see this little icon, so that's your library card and it has a little plus sign on it. Anytime you see that in the app, anywhere in the app, that's letting you know that you can borrow the title directly from that screen. So I'm just gonna tap on this icon here 
and you can see I now have the option to borrow. So I don't have to tap on its jacket cover, then tap borrow. It's really nice and easy right from that screen. I'm gonna go ahead and borrow this book, this magazine, not the book. And again, I'm borrowing this for 21 days. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that I want to I want to borrow the magazine. And I'm actually really quickly going to stop it from downloading just for the presentation here. Magazines are image heavy, so you'll notice that an ebook will download really fast, but a magazine will take a little longer because it's so image heavy. And I just didn't want it to slow down my internet here for our presentation. So what I wanted to show you on this page was um, the notify me tag prompt. So the very first time you borrow a magazine, Libby is going to ask you if you want to set up a notify me tag. What a notify me tag is, is once you set it up, you can add magazines to it and Libby will alert you of any time a new issue of that magazine is added to your library's digital collection. So you're not going to have to keep on searching the New Yorker every couple of weeks to see if there's new issues. Libby will just alert you of that. So mine is already set up. You can see I named it magazines. So now anytime I borrow a magazine for the first time, Libby's going to say, do you want to add it to your notify me tag? And of course I do. I want to be alerted of when the New Yorker adds new issues. So I'm just going to tap on that magazine tag and now it's added. So I'm going to open a magazine. I'm not going to open this magazine here because like I said, it is a uh, image heavy and I didn't download it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on go to shelf. I already have a magazine downloaded on my shelf and I'm going to open that one up instead. So here is the magazine I was talking about. I'm going to tap on open in Libby. So when you first open a magazine, you're going to have some menus up at the top and bottom of the screen. This bottom menu is going to have thumbnails for each page of the magazine. You can use that to page forward if you'd like. Just like anything in the Libby app, you're going to find what works for you and it doesn't work for every single user. Um, it will all depend on preference, but I'm going to show you a few different options here. So you could tap on these uh, thumbnails here if you would like. You can see your progress throughout the magazine right here around this reading bubble. So I'm on page one of 116. Up at the very top of the screen, you'll see the A icon. If you stayed from our getting started, you know that's how you can change your appearance settings. What's really nice about Libby is that your reading settings from your ebook will pull into your magazine experience. So if you've already set those in your ebook, you're not going to have to set them again in that magazine. They'll just carry right on over. Right next to that, you can see a zoom button. This is going to be pinching in and out of the screen to zoom in and out. It can be cumbersome. Again, you'll find what works for you best if that's what you want to do. More power to you. I am going to show you another option there for something that is a little easier on my eyes. I'm going to go ahead and drop these menus out of the way by tapping on the center of the screen. And then we're going to page forward by tapping on the right. So if you are like my mom, you want to see every single page of this magazine. You don't care if it's an ad or anything like that. That is going to be keep on swiping, keep on swiping, keep on swiping. That's how she likes to read her magazines. I'm more of a show me the articles that I want to read and that is it. So if you're like me, what you'll do is likely swipe until you find this uh, table of contents here. And then from here, these are all links. So you could click any of these links here. Let's go ahead and jump into an article by tapping on one of them. And you can see it dragged me all the way over to page 98. So here is where you could bring those menus up and zoom in and out if you'd like. But I told you there's a nice, easy way to read um, articles as well. That's down at the very bottom of the screen. You'll see, read the article. If you tap on this one, your ebook appearance settings carry over into that magazine experience. So you can see I have a little larger font here. 
And then also this menu scrolls up and down. So you're not having to pinch in and out. All you're having to do is scroll through the article and it's a nice clean interface that isn't too busy. So I prefer this way, as I mentioned, you'll figure out what works best for you, but I wanted to show you both options that you have. To make this menu drop out of the way, all you have to do is tap right above that menu there and it will drop out of the way. Now, I just like to show you how to get back to that table of contents after you've jumped into an article. So I'm gonna tap in the center of the screen and in the middle bar here, you'll see the title of the article that you're on. If you tap on that middle bar there, it will bring up your full table of contents. And I'm just going to scroll up to the top here. The table of contents in a magazine is typically called a masthead. So that's what you're looking for. If you tap on that, it'll drag you back to that table of contents and you can choose another article to hop into. So that is tip number one, finding and reading magazines. I'm going to leave this magazine so we can hop into tip number two. So I tapped in the center of the screen. I'm just going to go ahead and tap on back to leave that magazine now. All right, let me dismiss my reading now bar. And I'm going to tap on my library card to begin browsing my library's digital collection again. Now you saw I tapped it the first time and it went to the that magazine page that I was looking at. Um, if you ever get lost in Libby and you're like, wait, where am I at? I tapped on the icon and I don't know what happened. Double tap the icon of your choice. So double tap the library card. It will always send you right back to the very top of the main page there. So I double tap library card and it took me back here. The same will go with your shelf or any other tab. All right. So we're now moving on to tip number two, which is customizing your browsing experience. So we're on that library card tab. Remember, grab your library card, head to the library to find a book to read. Up at the top here, you'll see those filters. Now we're gonna scroll just down below that catalog guide one more time. And the first way we're going to um, customize our browsing experience is by setting a preference. So you'll always see preferences right underneath those catalog guides. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. What preferences do will apply a filter to any search that you make. So what's really nice about this is you're not going to have to continually add filters to every search. If there's a blanket filter that you want to make, it will save and apply to all lists, no matter how many times you close the app and reopen it or anything like that. So for this example here, I only speak English and therefore only read in English. So I'm going to set a language preference to English. Another good example of when you would use this is uh, if you specifically like to listen to audiobooks and you don't want to read ebooks, then you have the preference to choose just audiobooks. That way you're only seeing audiobooks in your uh, searches and vice versa. Maybe you can't stand the way that narrators make all their voices. You don't want to do that. You want to read, you can set an ebook preference and that will stop any. Um, audiobooks from showing up in your searches. I'm going to go ahead and tap on apply preference. And now if I scroll down here, you'll see that preference has attached. I have a one next to that preferences button. That's letting me know, hey, you have one filter in place that's filtering all of your lists just to let you know. So however many preferences you have, that's the number that you will see. So that is the first way that you can customize your browsing experience. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here. You can see we start to see those curated collections that the library puts together for you. If you don't want to see any of these particular collections, then what you can do is tap on this little minus sign here to hide that list. So I'm going to tap on that and you'll see you'll be prompted if you want to hide this, you can proceed. 
that will drop the list out of your view and all of your other lists will shift up and a new list will populate at the very bottom. So this is something that you'll find that you're doing all of the time because the library is always trying to show you new collections, curated collections. These are going to change month to month. So curating this section of the app is going to be something that you're continually doing all of the time. But really, really nice if you there are any collections there that you're like, oh, I'm never going to read, you know, kids read along titles. You can drop that right out of the way and you no longer have to look at it. Now, if you ever accidentally um, hide a list out of the way, all you have to do is scroll all the way to the bottom of this screen. There are 16 collections that show on this screen, so it's a lot of scrolling, but if you do need to do that, there's a reset button there at the bottom of the screen where you can bring those uh, lists back up. So that is tip number two, uh, customizing that browsing experience um, so that you're seeing the books that you want when you are browsing your library's digital collection. I'm going to move on to tip number three, which is like the sister to tip number two. So we talked about customizing your browsing experience. We're now going to talk about how to filter and refine your searches and browses so that you can find the books that you like faster. So for this tip, I am someone who I'll read just about anything. I like ebooks. I like audiobooks. I like all different genres. And so I'm not really picky. But in this situation, let's say it's not COVID times. I'm not staying safe at home. I'm going to go on a road trip tomorrow with my mom. She loves historical fiction mystery titles. So I'm going to look for a historical fiction mystery title. Because it's a road trip and I'm not allowed to legally read while I drive, let's go for an audiobook. I need it to be available now because I don't want to place a hold on a book that I need tomorrow. So I need it to be available now and I want it to be a new release. So this is my criteria here that I'm going to be using to filter this search down. So I'm start, going to start on these filters up at the top. And I could choose two here right off the bat to jump into. I wanted a new release, so I could start by tapping on new. I also said I wanted something available now. I don't want to place a hold on it, so I could also tap the available filter. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with available. Now you'll see listing and then it will start listing all of the different formats. So we have books, audiobooks, and magazines in this list. Let's go ahead and filter out magazines and books by tapping on audiobooks up here in this pink section. And now I'm only looking at those audiobooks. So I already have available now and audiobooks there for me. Just notice, I want to point out, you can see I still have that one next to preference. So I'm only seeing English titles. I'm not seeing any of those uh, foreign language titles. Now I'm going to come over to refine. And this is where we're going to start really narrowing this list down. So the first thing we come to is subjects. Now I'm more of a memoir girl, but I love my mom. So I let her force me to listen to mystery historical fictions. I'm going to go ahead and tap on mystery here. That is going to show me all of those mystery titles. You can see this number is already falling pretty dramatically. We're down to 2,800. I'm going to tap on refine one more time to change that subject again. So I have the mystery subject selected. My mom doesn't like just mysteries. She wants them all to be wearing fancy dresses as they solve their mysteries. So I'm gonna tap on historical fiction here. And that number just dropped from 2,800 to 204. I like to point this out so that you know you can find niche subjects. You don't have to go into a broad mystery subject. If you want a mystery that's also a historical fiction, Add that second subject and that will continue filtering your list. So you could do this for nonfiction too, nonfiction, specifically military nonfiction or something like that. So you can find those niche subjects. Now I'm going to come back to refine here. You'll get very comfortable with the refine button. And we are going to come down 
to sort by. So at the very end of that list, you'll see sort by. And as I mentioned, I want a new release. My mom's read every historical fiction title that's older. Let's go ahead and find a new release here. And now this list is sorted from newest titles at the top. And as I make my way down that list, those titles get older. So we started out with over 70,000 books and we are now down to 204. I would have spent all day looking at 70,000 books and I've done it before. I love looking for books, um, but I was busy. We, we were packing for that road trip. So I'm now only going to spend like an hour looking at 204 books instead of all day. So that is tip number three. Uh, filtering and refining your searches so that you can find the books that you like faster. Now we're going to move on to tip number four. This is all about tagging titles. Tags are a great way to create lists in Libby to keep books organized or save them for later if you ever come across a book in a search that you maybe aren't in the mood for now but maybe want to read later. You can tag those. Tags are something that sets Libby apart from the OverDrive app. So people often ask, what are the differences between OverDrive and Libby? OverDrive gives you a wish list and a history that you can make, whereas Libby's tagging system is very robust. You can create as many tags as you want. They can be named whatever you want, and you're not limited to just two of them. So let's start scrolling through this search here. You'll see that the option to tag will appear the third thing down from every book. It's going to say tag. If you tap on tag, you can create a new tag. If you have tags created already, you can tap on any of those tags to add that title to the list. You'll see there's regular tags and smart tags. So I already talked about one of our smart tags, that magazine tag is notify me. So you get notified of all those newer issues of magazines when they come out. This tag right above it is a little red receipt. And what that does is attaches itself to every book that you borrow in Libby. And that way you just have a full list of all the books that you've ever borrowed. And now if you don't want Libby to automatically tag your borrowed books, I will also show you how to delete this. So don't worry about that. But I just wanted to point out, everyone's gonna have this tag, this little receipt, and it will attach itself, like I said, to any book that you borrow. Now for this book here, let's go ahead and create a new tag. I just want to show you what that looks like. We'll tap on new tag. You'll be prompted to name your tag. So let's say I came across this book. I'm not in the mood to read his mystery title right now, but let's create a mystery tag. So when I am in the mood, I can hop right in and I'll know this is a book I was interested in. So I'm going to go ahead, type in mystery and then tap go. And now you can see that tag has attached to that book. So I also have one here on my wish list. And then you can see I have that little red receipt as well. What I love about the smart red receipt tag is we're searching for a book, right? I didn't pick a book yet that I wanted to listen to with my mom on that road trip. So if I'm looking for this book, I come across Devil in the Dark Water and I'm like, oh, I read that already. I'm just going to skip right past it in my search. I am so guilty of reading the same 50 pages of the same book a thousand times because the back jacket cover, I'm like, this sounds really good. Well, of course it sounds good. You've read it already. So this makes it so you don't have to do that anymore. All right. So that is how you can create tags. Now I'm going to show you where those tags live in Libby and how you can delete them or export them out of the app into an email, a text message, or you could even print them out. So I'm going to come down to my bookshelf, that little book, stack of books icon here. And remember, I'm going to double tap it and that's going to send me back up to the very top there. So I'm at the top of my shelf. You can see my loans, holds, and then my tags start being listed here. If you tap on more, that's gonna give you a full list of your tags. And you can just tap on the desired tag to view that list. So let's hop into my wish list, see what's in there. All right, so 
Do you remember what I said this icon does? Anytime you see that library icon with the plus sign there, if you tap on that, it will allow you to borrow the book directly from that screen. So you're not gonna have to go to the title details page and then tap borrow. But one other thing I wanted to point out here too is right underneath this little box here, you'll see all of the library cards that you have attached to Libby and how many copies of that specific title are available at each library. So I have two library cards attached here. I actually have a copy of this book available at either one. So it doesn't matter which one I borrow it from, but I like to point this out because sometimes you'll see one library has a wait list, the other library has an available copy. So you're not gonna have to place a hold. A nice, easy way to get the books that you like faster. So I'm going to drop that menu out of the way. I'm just going to tap right above it. And that dropped right out of the way. Now up at the top here, we have an actions button. If you tap on this, that's where you'll be prompted to rename your tag or delete it. So if you didn't want that smart tag that auto tags all of your borrowed books, you can go ahead and delete that. You also have the option to export. So I'm going to tap on export tag. You get three different options here for how to export that tag. I'm going to go ahead and tap on table. That's my favorite, but I've said it a million times. You're going to find what works for you. I don't expect everyone to do things my way. I personally like the way that this one um, populates, but See, I'm in that data export screen. If you come up to the top right hand corner here, you'll see the share button. Now this share button isn't specific to Libby. It is universal for all apps. Anytime you see a box with an arrow pointing up, that's letting you know you can send this content, share this link out with you know whoever you want. So I'm gonna tap on that share icon. And I have my... Um, my device has a large font right now so that it was easier to see, but um, this menu does look a little wonky when that happens. But you can see I have a messages button. I could send this out in a message. I could send this in an email. I'm always sending my sister my uh, tag list so that she can read all the books I like so I actually have someone to talk about with them. And then if you scroll down, you'll also have a print option. So if you want to print your tag list to take to the physical library to find a physical copy, then you can do that as well. So some nice options there for um, exporting your tags out of the Libby app. All right. So that was tip number four. We have one more tip to go here. I am going to go down to my shelf. I'm going to double tap it and we're going to open up an ebook and we're going to talk about making notes and highlights in the Libby app. So uh, notes and highlights are really great for anyone who's in a book club or anyone who is reading books for school. Let's just skip past this note here. There we go. If you come across a passage that you want to make a note and highlight about, what you're gonna do is tap on the first word in that passage. I'm moving my mouse a little bit to the left so that you can see what the word does when I tap on it. So I'm holding my finger on the word when. Just remember, if you tap quickly on the screen, it's gonna turn the page. So make sure tap, you're going to tap your finger on the screen, hold it immediately on the screen, and then start dragging your finger across the screen until you, oh no, that was my fault, until you get to the very end of the passage that you want to highlight. Once that full passage turns blue, lift your finger off the screen, and that's when you'll get prompted to highlight. So I'm going to choose pink here. And now that I've chosen a color, I can tap on that highlight to add a note. So that little note menu drops down. I've typed full paragraphs for book club here. So you're not limited to how much you can talk here. I'm just going to do this as a note for the sake of demonstration and then tap on save. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, page forward. I just realized that was about 
toilet talk, I always happen to choose like the worst passages to highlight. I randomly do it. But if you ever find a, uh, or if you ever want to find those highlights again, while you're in the ebook, you want to reference back to those highlights, tap in the center of the screen. That is going to make those menus appear. And what you're going to look for is the multiple bookmark icon there in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to tap on that. And that drops down a full list of all of the uh, tags and, or not tags, we're done talking about tags, highlights that you've made inside the book. So I'm just gonna go ahead, tap on the highlight that I wanna view. That's gonna drag me back to that page. And then if I wanna see the note, I just have to tap on the highlight there and that note will drop down. Now we know that sometimes you're gonna to wanna to access your notes and highlights, even if the library uh, has taken that book back, you know, it returned on its due date, maybe there's a wait list so you can't borrow it again. So don't worry, we have an option for you. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna leave this ebook. Let's tap on the center of the screen and tap on back. So we're back on the shelf. Now, when you want to find your notes and highlights for any books that have already returned to the library, what you're going to do is look for the title details page. And when you're searching or browsing for a book, you find that by tapping on the jacket cover. So you could search for the book and tap on the jacket cover and find it that way. I have that handy smart tag, right? So I know if I tap on more and go to my borrowed smart tag, all of the books I've borrowed in the past are gonna show up here. And I know I'm looking for my notes in the guest list. So I'm just gonna tap on the jacket cover from there, a little simpler than searching for it. And on the title details page, you'll see your reading journey. The reading journey starts as soon as you borrow the book, and then it will capture all of the reading data there thereafter. So up at the top, you can see I've picked up this book five times. I'm on track to uh, finish in 45 minutes. If I scroll down here, what I'm looking for for my notes and highlights is the timeline for this title. And here you'll see all of your highlights listed. And to view what those highlights are, you just have to tap that's going to bring up the full passage. So if you highlight a big full passage, it will still show up in its entirety. And then it will also show your note as well. Now, this isn't your only option. You can also print these out or export them just like I showed you with the tags. So I'm actually going to scroll back up to the top here of my reading journey. And you'll see that actions button. And within that actions button, you'll have the export reading, reading data option there. And I'm not going to follow those steps again. You just saw it with the tags, but it will prompt you the same way that those tags did to choose how you'd like to export them. And then you tap on that share button and you are good to go. So that is our fifth and final tip. I know I've just been jabbering on and on and on. So I'm going to let Joe take back over here to uh, wrap us up and get us in the Q&A. Thanks, Marissa. And thank you all for joining us today. We have about 10 minutes left in our scheduled time. So please feel free to send through any questions you might have. Um, we appreciate any and all questions and we want to make sure we're giving you those answers you need. So take some time now to send those through that Q&A button on your screen. If you don't have any questions for us, I'm just going to do some wrapping up here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us today. We hope that this was helpful to uh, show you how much we love Libby and get you on that same path as well. If you have any questions at all, I, um, after this session ends, I know Marissa mentions it in the getting started session, but you can submit uh, you can search for common solutions and frequently asked questions directly in the Libby menu. You can also use that to submit a ticket directly to our tech support team. Libby menu, get some help and either common solutions or up at the top, you can type in a few keywords to try to find uh, what you're looking for. So with that said, if you don't have any questions, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. When you do, a survey will pop up. If you can take a few minutes and give us any feedback you've got, we'd greatly appreciate it. We always like to be growing and changing our presentation to best suit everyone. 
uh, last but certainly not least, a final reminder. I know I've said it uh, till I'm blue in the face, but you will receive a recording of this entire webinar tomorrow morning in an email from Zoom. That uh, video will last 30 days, but there is a giant download button in the upper right hand corner once you click through the link to allow you to keep that video permanently. So heads up on there. Those instructions will be in the uh, email you receive tomorrow as well. But I uh, just wanted to point it out one time here. So thank you all so much. Uh, Marissa and I will be here for the next few minutes answering any questions that come through. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining us. There are two things I do want to show off while we've got you here, just some fun features uh, within the Libby menu. <clears throat> Excuse me, the first one has been around as long as Libby has. Uh, we believe representation is important, so we do have an option that you can change Libby's skin tone. So when you tap on her face in the Libby menu, you have some options there to pick from. Her default is just a kind of typical emoji yellow, and then we have some human skin tones underneath. And then the other is kind of a fun tip and more of like an organizational tip if you are sharing your device. You can change the color of your library card. So if you tap on see library cards and then tap on actions on that current card active, you can come down and tap on change library colors. So on one hand, this is just a fun tip if you like to pick different colors and customize your experience. But on the flip side, if you are sharing a device with your family or everyone in the household and you've all got your cards in there from the same library, by color coding them, you're uh, making sure you're only borrowing on your card and vice versa. I know my siblings and I, uh, if we had to share a device like this growing up, we definitely would not have had enough uh, holds or loans if we were only using one card. <laughs> Even with the hundred loans and holds that our demo card has here, it still wouldn't have been enough for my family. <laughs> so if you're all using cards, just keep them organized that way. Also great if you've got multiple cards from different locations that have similar colors, uh, makes it a little less confusing to see um, those options. So two fun things there. <laughs> Now it doesn't look like we have any questions coming through. So I am just going to pop our thank you card up on the screen here. I have covered all of those final items as far as you'll receive that recording tomorrow. You can send questions to our tech support team. They are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. They will get back to you, even though there's always someone working Every time there's a big update, like we just had recently with Libby, it always takes a little bit of time to reply. So just keep that in mind, but we're always working to make sure your questions are answered. So with that said, I'm gonna give everyone five minutes back of their day since it doesn't look like we have any questions coming through. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us this morning and happy reading. Happy reading. <laughs>